Whether you're a seasoned plant parent or you're just beginning your plant fam, there is always something new to learn. Today, I'm gonna show you six essential skills you can use to take your house plant game to the next level. I'm plant queen, plant parent extraordinaire. Let's get dirty. When a plant is sitting in the same soil for quite some time, whether it's a year or two years or three years, that soil is gonna be depleted of its original nutrients. No matter how much nutrients you're adding to that soil, you may want to freshen up that soil mixture recipe. First up, we have the ZZ plant. And so this is one of my favorite queens. I have a few of these queens, very hardy, very resilient, really easy to care for. And as you can see, she is in her nursery pot. Nursery pots are meant to be temporary vessels for our green girls as they move from the nursery to the shelf of plant shop to the shelf in your living room, honey. This is not really meant to be a permanent home for this queen. This is really more so for transportation. So as you are shopping for your green girls, you wanna make sure that you are also shopping for a new, more permanent home for this queen. And so typically when I'm shopping for new pots for any green girl that I'm bringing into my space, I make sure that it's at least two inches larger than the nursery pot because we wanna give her a little more extra room to grow, honey. Now, she's a bit snug in there, and so I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna massage the nursery pot, loosen up that soil. Now, one little thing before I get into this particular queen to be mindful of is that all plants experience a level of shock. There's transplant shock and root shock. Transplant shock is basically when there's a change in temperature, atmosphere, sunlight conditions, all those things when you bring that queen into a new environment. And so what I typically like to do is wait at least a week or two before repotting her into a new home. And when I see some new growth beginning to develop, that means that she's a bit more settled in her new space. The second kind of shock is the shock that I'm getting ready to put her through is the root shock. And that's basically a change in soil or a change in the roots environment. So in order to spread out the transplant shock and the root shock, I tried to wait so that she can experience the transplant shock, go through that moment, and then repot her so that I'm not putting too much shock on her at once. Cause honey, you don't know where the soil been. Girl, we wanna make sure you get rid of this old soil and give yourself some new, fresh, nutritious soil for your plant. So what I'm gonna do first is that I'm going to create a little foundational layer at the bottom of this planter. What I'm gonna, oh, look at that. She is just ready to go. I'm just gonna put some soil around. But you do just wanna do a gentle push to make sure she's a bit snug in her new little home. You don't want to like push it in too much because then you'll like break some of her uh, main root system. And bam, there you have it. She's looking all lush in her new little home. I'm just gonna add a little bit more fur bark to the top soil. This just adds like a little bit of an ambiance, um, a little bit of color. I love a little monochromatic situation. And then what I'm gonna do is just take this watering can. I'm just gonna water her completely. And the purpose of this is to allow that new soil to settle around her roots. Bam! Eventually, ah, there we go, tears of joy! Look at that, she's crying because she's so happy. A little messy, but as you can see, that's one of the benefits of having terracotta pots or pots with drainage because all that extra water is gonna fall out of this pot and then once it collects in the trays, you can then put this to the side and then whoop, toss this water out. I really enjoy making my own soil mixture recipe because it allows me to be a bit more intentional in the care for my particular green girl. So the base of any of my soil mixture recipes is the potting mix itself. It does not actually contain any top soil, which is the soil that we are used to experiencing in nature, in forests, in jungles, in parks. So that soil is actually too dense and too compact for closed containers. And so potting mix is specifically manufactured for plants and closed containers. This already has amazing components for our green girls and can be used just as is. 
But because I'm a little extra and I'm that plant parent, I like to add a little pizzazz to the mix. Now, while you can use gloves and all that stuff, I like to get my hands dirty. So we're gonna get rid of those things. Okay, we have fir bark, and this is basically little wood chips from the bark of fir trees, and it allows for little air pockets to form in the soil mixture. So I tend to use three delicious big handfuls of fir bark in this mixture just to make sure that I'm not overwatering my queen. Ooh! Mm. I wish you could be here right now. This smell of fur bark is just delicious. And then I'm just gonna add a little handful of the perlite, all right? And so I'm just gonna, huh, bam, there we go. Perlite is basically mined volcanic glass when pressurized comes out into these light little fluffy rocks. Now, because I wanna make sure my green girls have the nutrients they need to grow, thrive, and serve those lush looks, what is she gonna add? She's gonna add some amazing, delicious compost, all right? This is going to add a little bit of extra nutrients to the soil. Potty mix already has nutrients inside, and so this is adding a little bit of extra um for our green girl. And the reason that I enjoy natural compost as a fertilizer is that there's less likely of a chance that you are going to over fertilize your plants. And when it comes to over fertilization, that means that the roots are going to burn and that's going to impact the health of our plant. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that in there. Ooh, amazing and beautiful. Oh my God, I feel like I'm in a kitchen, honey. This soil mixture is actually a wonderful potting medium for cacti and succulents. There's a lot of aeration. The soil is well drained and it's not going to stay wet for too long. I really encourage you to dive into this journey. It's a wonderful way for you to be intentional with your green girls in their care, not only when it comes to watering and pruning, but also when it comes to that potting mix and making sure that you're catering it to the green girl, your plant parent behavior, and the space that you're working with. And then if you want to add a little pizzazz or a little bit of glitter, or in this case, horticultural sand, and to the mix, you can add that little bit of dash, all right, to add a little desert sheet to the moment, honey. All right, queens, let's get into it. What is propagation? Propagation is the process of creating a whole new other green girl with the existing plant fam that you already have. There are a number of different ways to propagate our green girls, but there are three particular methods that I enjoy the most, and that includes stem propagation, leaf propagation, and offset slash plantlet propagation, honey. So first up to the stage, one of my personal faves, we have the snake plant. Now, when you look at the snake plant, the first thing that you notice is that she is all leaves. She is all body. So that's gonna impact how you're gonna propagate this particular queen. So I enjoy propagating this queen through leaf propagation. The first thing you're looking for is to identify which leaf you want to propagate. I enjoy this leaf because she's a bit of a showstopper and I think she's going to grow into a lovely new snake plant. So I'm going to choose this leaf to propagate. Okay, so what's next? You just snip it. <laughs> So honey, it's not that complicated. Take those shears and get to snipping, okay? Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> you could basically just stick this into water, but I've found that there's a little trick that you can do to increase the chances that there's gonna actually be a pup or an offset that grows from this cutting along with roots. So what you'll do is basically just a little angle triangle cutting situation. Bam. The goal is that a new snake plant leaf is going to grow from this angle and create a whole new other green girl situation. So, I have a cute little mason jar. I found that when the bottom of the cutting touches the bottom of the vessel, it just turns to mush and decreases the chances that it's going to successfully root. So, we ain't here for none of that business and I want this to be looking all lush. What I'm going to do 
Oh, come on, scotch tape. So I'm gonna take this scotch tape because she's handy dandy when she needs to be. I'm gonna roll it up into a little situation and I'm just gonna stick it to the back of the plant. Whoop. Oh, look at that, success, bam. And about, I would say maybe a month or two, you'll begin to see some amazing lush little roots begin to grow. And if you're lucky, from the point of this little triangle, a new leaf may begin to grow. And then darling, there you have it. You have yourself a whole new other snake plant. Now, darling, before me, I have the lush, the beautiful, the viney Hartley philodendron, and she is the perfect candidate for stem propagation. Now, when it comes to stem propagation, this is a wonderful method for green girls that have vines. You are looking for plant nodes, and plant nodes are a point in the vine that can develop into a potential root system. And as you can see, she's already begun to do so. <laughs> She's just looking gorgeous right here, my goodness gracious. Now, with these particular roots, I wouldn't put them directly into soil just yet. I wanna place them in water, have them mature a little bit more, and grow to about maybe four to five inches long. This is about two and a half inches long, so she's almost there. She just needs a little bit of um to get her to that next level. And typically what I'll do is that I'll cut maybe like a half inch or an inch below the node that I want to submerge in water. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm gonna pour a little bit of this room temperature water into this little mason jar. Bam! The important thing in this case are these roots right here. She's probably not gonna grow roots from uh, the end of this cutting. The important thing is to make sure that these roots are the ones that are submerged. And so darling, there we have it. This is an easy process. You should not be intimidated by this at all. It's a fun little activity. It's an opportunity to experiment with your green girls and also test your plant parent skills, okay? We have the infamous spider plant. And isn't she gorgeous? This is a different method of propagation. This is offset plantlet propagation. Based on the anatomy of this particular plant, she produces little pups. And each pup is a potential new plant. There's two ways to do this. You can either keep her still attached to the mother plant while these roots are growing and basically just plant that little plantlet into some moist soil. This allows for the roots to continue to grow and have an environment to grow while still being attached to the mother plant. Option two is basically just snip her from her mother plant. You're gonna cut this part of the plant right here and you're gonna snip it so that she can grow into her own self, darling. Now you have three little spider plants that you can pot into soil. It's okay if you get a little messy. What's life without a little bit of a mess, you know? Bam, look at that. You have a whole new other green girl ready to grow and serve those lush looks. And so there you have, darling, three wonderful ways that you can green up the space with the green girls you already have and dive into a little plant parent experimentation, honey. Now, when it comes to grooming our green girls, that's basically us checking in with our queen and making sure that they're good. Pests are more attracted to unhealthy plants, so pruning is actually a preventative measure to ensure that your green girls are not infested with the travesty that are pests, darling. Let's welcome Miss Hartley Philodendron. This is another variety of the Hartley Philodendron, and she is looking a little bit rough. Boop, see? She was ready to let her go. I didn't even need the shears. She just let her go right there. We all need to get rid of those yellowing leaves, honey, because some things are only for a season, okay? And so it's important that we are removing these leaves because it's actually preventing any pest from latching on to these decaying, browning, or yellowing leaves. This leaf right here, it's beginning to brown, it's beginning to yellow, but she's not ready to let go of her yet. It's always a good test to see if she's ready to let go of that leaf. Just a gentle little tug moment right there. And it is the perfect preventative measure to ensure that your green girl does not become infested with pest honey.
Darling, there you have a few essential skills to have your green girl serve in lush look. Let me know what else you'd like to learn in the comments below, honey.